Hey y'all, real quick, we edited this video using AI. So let us know what you think of the audio quality. We wanna make sure we're giving you a solid audio experience. So let us know what you think of it. Comment down below and let's get into the episode. Peace. So this guy sent her photos of furniture, right? And she's kind of like, raw. Like, I know where this is going. Like, what are you, what are you, why are you sending me photos of furniture? So she responds like, All right, what is this? He's just like, yo, don't mind me. I'm just moving in your DMs, you know? And <laughs> I went on ChatGPT earlier and I asked ChatGPT what like the wackiest side hustle is. Of course. Is. You did. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And it said professional cuddling. I really love designing things and I would love to design some really cool merch, but I also want to make sure that it was produced sustainably and that it's good quality where it's merch that you're going to want to keep. It's not just like the tote you get for starting a new job that you throw out. Alex is away on vacation. I was thinking you can take me like bra shopping and you can hear the guy friend on the phone saying, oh, like, aren't you guys together? Like, yeah, but he wouldn't know. Like, do you still want to come with me? And the boyfriend is standing there hearing the whole conversation. Hello and welcome to the Hustle Over Everything podcast. This is the podcast where we see stories, tips, and tactics for entrepreneurs who have done it. Today, we have a treat for you. And once again, remember, we're sponsored by Narai Sellers Wine. But today, we have Alina Cahill in the building. Alina, how are you? Good. How many times do you practice that in the mirror? You know, I don't. You know, I've done it so many times. They can do it out of like we were doing a radio interview the other day, and he closed off the interview show on someone else's show with our podcast thing. It was so funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, listen, there's certain words at this point that like I know will trigger Owen because we've taken so much love. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can just make him score a mistake. The hustle is what you can't control. And I'm like, oh my goodness, bro. You're hitting them with this? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, not now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but yeah, talk to us, you know. So, first off, let's introduce to the audience, you know, tell us the audience about yourself, a little one minute summation, you know, so we can uh, dive into your story a little bit. Yeah, cool. First First of all, thanks for having me. My pleasure. So, Our pleasure. This is a sweet studio and uh, having a great time so Shout far. Every day, Joy. Shout out to Josh. <laughs> Gotta give her some credit. You can get me. Gotta pay credit where it's due. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm just a girl from Toronto. I'm uh, a senior manager at Owner, which is an RBCX venture. It's a legal tech platform that helps entrepreneurs launch their business. I've worked in financial services, fintech, banking, legal tech, mostly in sales roles for the last five years. And basically, or most of those roles or products or companies have serviced entrepreneurs. And so fast forward to today, where I work at Owner, a company that helps entrepreneurship um, and literally helps you launch your business, I caught the bug. I'm also an entrepreneur. I launched my own company in 2020 called Collective. It's a lifestyle brand. We sell clothing and objects, and I wanted to do something a little bit purposeful. And so with every sale, we plant 10 trees, and we also save five trees in the rainforest. It started off as a creative outlet for me and kind of now turned into something that I could monetize as a side hustle. I guess that's why I'm here. But yeah, during COVID, you know, I was working long hours and I wanted something that was a little bit creative that was different than my technical job at the time. Um, and so I started designing streetwear, totes, hoodies, jackets. I actually first started selling home goods that would help you reduce your use of disposable plastics in the home. So glass straws, Bamboo toothbrushes. The bamboo toothbrush would look really cool in the studio. Yeah, it's so astounding. Like the thing of this studio would definitely... We actually had a collision. collision. Yes, we had an entrepreneur from Ukraine who had a bamboo toothbrush. Or, was it bamboo products? Was it I, think a, it, I think it was either bamboo or recycled plastic. Recycled plastic or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the bamboo yeah. wave was hot like at that point. Yeah, and she actually uh, started supplying the army with the, wow yeah exactly the ukrainian army with bamboo supplies so they could you know have proper things out there and i was like damn like look at that and what's crazy about her story too was that her boyfriend told her about it on their first date and they just like got back together from that <laughs> Like figuratively, uh, and, and that was history. <laughs> 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 and it was history from that. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. So yeah, yeah, most definitely. All right. So tell us about like some of the products that you sell now. Is it still the tote bags? What are some of the product assortment that you sell? Yeah. So I started off with home goods. So we had like the to the bamboo toothbrushes, the bamboo dish brush, mm. glass straws, really anything that helped you reduce your use of, of plastic. We, I even did bags. So the very first product I designed was like a terribly 
design tote bag. It was like poor cotton, but I just wanted to sell something that people could take to the grocery store and not need to use plastic bags. Fast forward to today, there's a variety of things. We have a couple of tote bags, which I designed from scratch. So these ones are much better quality. There's a pocket inside so that you don't you know, have to fumble for your keys at the bottom of your bag when you get home. There's really thick webbed handles so that it's just comfortable to hold. It's sitting right over there. The, the slow down the camera. Let's let's show that. <laughs> mm. I I'll walk down Queen West and I'll just see someone with a slow down tote and I'm like, do I go say hi? Walk us through this design. Yeah. So as someone who like loves you know using totes not only for sustainability but also like as a fashion mm -hmm. thing, like I'll wear this to you know the office mm -hmm. for yeah. a job or I'll like you know wear it out for dinner. But I wanted something that was really really cool that had unique messaging and I also love the color green. But I also wanted something that felt good because I sometimes put a lot of things in my tote bag. Yeah, the string, if it's not really sitting well on your shoulder, yeah. it's it's game over. Yeah, know? so the webbed handle was like yeah. something that was really, really important. That material looks also quality too. Yeah. Like it'll take uh, a huge cotton, baby. you know what I'm saying? And it'll still stand strong. Yeah. And then my favorite part is obviously the, the pocket. Oh, yeah. Like some secret. Secret stuff. Keep your wallet secret in there. Wallet. Lip gloss. Yeah, just like the everyday essential shades to kind of like grab. Yeah. This is this is one of the products that that I sell today, and I think this is my best seller. I'm actually sold out right now. Yeah, I like the flare. You know, it kind of has that uh, earthy vibe to it. There's kind of like this new trend I've been noticing, especially if you watch like uh, I mean, if Tumblr existed today, but it's like very. If Tumblr existed today, <laughs> it does. This doesn't. Exist. Ouch! Sorry, Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Tumblr? Sorry. By the way? You know what happened is that they I think they sold it and then they took off porn and uh, all of them like it started becoming cool with that we know like tumblr was hot bro yeah it's well, a, instagram killed it as well instagram killed it yeah. yeah tumblr was huge for like the queer community like we just all lived on tumblr back in the day and now it's gone and we're like what were you posting what do we do now <laughs> what were you posting like i'm curious mine was like cars and like suits <laughs> she, was, she, was like, she was like, I don't know. What you, you talk? <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting heat from over there because I still have Tumblr. It's still Oh, you still use it? No, but it still exists somewhere. So like if you if you looked it up, you'd probably find it. Collection of you know, what time I I I've, I've, I've booked your Tumblr. Say where I, I seen your Tumblr. <laughs> Are you serious, bro? I swear, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> you know the thing is when you search my name up, it says Ono oh, Sende Tumblr. Exactly. Yeah, so, like, cause you made it too easy. You're sorry. Exactly. Exactly, made it too easy. I love my name so much. Like everything I do is just first and last name. Yeah, yeah. Word, exactly. So I, I pulled up your your Tumblr. Like, wow, look at old Owen Olsen Day. Oh, do you see me like wait, skinny self, bro? Yeah, I thought I was deist at the time. <laughs> yeah. So do you actually post things on Tumblr like of your own content? Because I would just reshare. I would like curate mood boards. Yeah. That was how I. I would like take pictures. I get my sisters to snap pics of me. So I used to thought I used to think I was so cool. So I used to buy like LRG. Like this is like a brand I. Used to wear back in the day and I had my G-Shock on and at the time Tumblr and G-Shock were like so synonymous you know so all the stuff I posted was just to like project this streetwear kid like kind of like a flair on my Tumblr mixed with, with some class so you'd have uh, I'm a huge fan of James Bond so you have some Aston Martins you'd have some suits you'd have some ties and everything like that but every picture of me was to embody streetwear nice yeah, yeah. I feel like mine would probably have a lot of green Porsche 911s. Like if you look at the collective feed, it's just green cars or green things. I also, like, I also feel like collective is very juicery. You know what I'm saying? Like I, if I see your, when I was looking at your brand, I feel like I got to go make a green juice. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go That's see a fresh yeah. one. You know? You're like, where's the celery? Where's the celery? Yeah. yeah. You know, where's the tennis <laughs> shorts? A dope collab could be you and HelloFresh. Oh yeah. yeah. You know all the same? Yeah. Even Freshy too. Freshy. Freshy. Freshy would be hot. Or greenhouse juices. Greenhouse juices, if you're listening to this, mm -hmm. you gotta <laughs> slide <laughs> slide okay, to the right let's, brand let's right make now. a slow down green juice. Word. <laughs> <laughs> Snaps in the back, most definitely. But one thing I want to mention for the audience is the one thing we're gonna talk about today is side hustles. Yeah. Because this is your side hustle. So we wanted to have a conversation about you know, some of the interesting aspects of side hustles because, you know, when we Google this and Google and YouTube it, it's always like the, the certain few five, five or six things, drive Uber, you know, try, try and, uh, you know, do writing on the side, tutoring, tutoring you know. Resume. Online classes, yeah. Online classes. So we want to like, uh, you know, have a, a show conventional. conversation, uncom yeah, unconventional. unconventional 
conversation around some side hustles that, you know, someone that we found interesting. And just dive into like what other ways we can make money, you know, as well as dive into your business. But before we get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about yours because you had some really cool wins. Mm -hmm. Like I know you've, you've had some like corporate brands. I don't know if you can mention it, but talk about working with big brands. Yeah, the big order. Oh, that big order. It's from Google that I, I can mention. That was one that like really helped blow up the, blow up this tote. Mm -hmm. It was a slow down tote? It was the slow down tote. Okay. Yeah. So what did they like about it? They basically, they were putting on an event for clients and they, part of the event was that they, the clients would go through a marketplace and they wanted to give them a memorable piece that would help them, you know, put all their goods in this bag. And I think they had gone through so many rounds of revisions and were looking for a really long time for a bag. And one of their product marketing team members saw my tote and was like, that's the one. That's the one. Like, we want to support small business. Um, we want to get, you know, this name out. And this is a really good tote. So, you know, we had a big order and it was great. I was like, I got the call and I had to check to see if I had enough inventory. And this was before I had the fulfillment center. And I like ran down to my parents' basement and was like counting to make sure I had enough to fulfill the order. But that was that was a really great one that really helped get the name out the door. And it kind of also helped me pivot into also wanting to work with B2B. Um, so getting the business out for larger orders. And then I was introduced to Cotton. And that's when I created the Cotton X Collective line, which was really, really cool because we, she's wearing one of the shirts. Yeah. Um, Alex in the back, like, I was like, you know, I, I want to ask you more questions about Cotton. And I was like, you didn't see this, Owen. <laughs> Save it for the pod. Save it for the pod. <laughs> Shout out, Alex. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll put an image, you know, up here so oh, yeah. you can uh, take a quick look. Uh, so I don't want to miss like skip over that that big or that's a big moment, right? How big is a company like Google order when it comes to like bidding or you know getting that order from a small brand like you? Yeah, I mean for for me it was big. For maybe a larger established brand that has a better supply chain, it may not have been big. But for me who does small like mini drops mini collections sometimes mm -hmm. we only launch 50 shirts mm -hmm. or 20 shirts for that matter this was a 250 bag order which right. was really big and it helped sell out yeah. right like we had to buy more i had to make more totes we sold out again so that was really great i think like just being one at the time not having fulfillment support and being one person it was really overwhelming but it was also like that point of growth where it's like okay people like these designs like this can actually maybe go somewhere so that's yeah. great Share more about um because you you you're positioning to like B two B right? How do you set up like your internal infrastructure to target B two B companies and uh, create order systems and like order sheets? Because Google hits you up like, hey, I mean, we want these bags, right? How do you go on from taking that one success and now setting up like the internal infrastructure to go after like other B two B companies? Yeah, Owen's like, do you cold call like. Are you now just like picking up the phone and grinding and calling so many people that that was that gives you know that gave me a lot of leverage to be like okay I'm gonna call all these companies and see or send out all these emails and and see if you know I get bites and it it gives it gave me the the leverage to say to other companies like I'm fulfilling large orders I'm a small business this is sustainably sourced and produced and you know it's designed in Toronto it's something that you can support uh, and also give out at you know your events or whatever that may be. But the way that I've set, out, set it up internally is I can now, quote unquote, take in larger wholesale orders. Um, so at that point, I kind of panicked because I didn't actually have, I wasn't actually set up for B2B where I could fulfill a large wholesale order. So what I did immediately was I started to build better relationships with my suppliers and manufacturers. And then through that, I was introduced to Cotton, but I now have other manufacturers and suppliers that... I can contact when I do get a big order. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm seeing like a lane, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but creating swag bags for these companies, like for say new hires, uh, creating like, hey, like a slow down thing. I think this would be great for tech bros. You know what I'm saying? Because they're told to stay up all night, push the latest feature and everything like that. Especially in San Fran, I think this would like kill it in that in the Silicon Valley world. I don't know. Is that what you're thinking about doing too? Yeah. Um, like swag bags and everything like that, like in an eco-friendly manner? Yeah. I mean, that's a really good point because like there's a lot of talk about how merch is not as sustainable as it can be. Like it's very disposable. And I think sometimes you can buy it's merch. Cheap. Exactly. Yeah. Like I look back to the very first tote bag that I made. It was terrible. Like mm -hmm. it was bad quality. I mean, I have high standards at this point, but it wasn't something that I wanted to keep for a long time. So I think 
going the merch route, like I really love designing things and I would love to design some really cool merch, but I also want to make sure that it was produced sustainably and that it's good quality where it's merch that you're going to want to keep. It's not just like the tote you get for starting a new job that you throw out Mm -hmm. or that hat you get from a conference that you throw out because it's cheap quality. And I think cotton really aligns with that ethos. Yeah. Some merch for companies, it's like you're embarrassed to even like being public with it because it just looks so cheap. The t-shirt's so thin. The the hoodie is sometimes I think this medium is gonna fit everybody, but the fabric just ends up thinning out. Mm-hmm. So all the merch I got when I was working in tech, I think Clearco had the best merch. They gave us an amazing bottle. It's kind of like your grenade bottle you got in the kitchen. Yeah, the Kinto. The Kinto, exactly. Shout out Kinto. Yeah, we gotta put that on camera, but that's a, that's a great design bottle. Oh, wait. Is it? Is right it that? <laughs> like, look at that thing. That looks like a bomb. <laughs> I don't know where the camera is, but. <laughs> yeah. You know, so then like Clearco had merch like that and they had so many different like things. Free ads. Huh? It's like, it's all you're giving free ads. Can we get paid for these? <laughs> for me, right? Uh, we continue, 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 continue. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> pretty much the uh, the bottles like other companies are giving, they feel like very dollar store, just kind of slap the logo on it and like, okay, welcome to the team. Yeah. There's a thing about logos too. Like the logo here is a little bit subtle. We're like, this is the main attraction. It's the main message. I think if you're going to make swag, putting your brand on it is important, but I think the messaging and the look of, of the merch is also important because it'll lead people to want to keep it for a long time. Yeah. Mm, yeah for sure. And when the co- a company does have like good quality merch, it makes a impact on like uh, when we went to Africa, I got a tote bag from Pinterest and it was so good that like, I brought it home, started wearing it, left it at home and my mom started using it. I'd come home and make, mom, is that the Pinterest? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's mine now. It's mine now, you know? And when it comes to like the cotton um, collaboration, how did that kind of come about? And how do you kind of work out the, the details of a brand deal like that? Yeah. So that was a really, really fun one. I was at Trinity Bellwoods doing a pop up and someone came by and saw my stuff and was like, where do you produce it? And asking all these questions. And his friend actually worked for Cotton. So I was introduced via a connection. So I was introduced. I had a quick phone call with Michael Simone, great guy at Cotton, told him about Collective, really wanted to collab, um, showed some design ideas. And they, Cotton Supply, which is their like supply manufacturing wing of the business, produced all the garments using 100% sustainably sourced Egyptian cotton. They've done a really good job at building a very unique supply chain, which is like what I, you know, hope to do for Collective as well. And like I think what they're doing is really, really cool. And so all of that kind of aligned. Their brand team looked at the designs, approved them, loved them. And we created a t-shirt, a long sleeve, and a sweater. And she's wearing them. She's wearing the 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 sweater. We I kind of repurposed the slow down design on that long sleeve. And the goal of the collection really was to create something that was traceable. So what's beneficial about it is you can literally trace the cotton down or back to the farmer in Egypt that harvested it. So that was a really big thing for me. Yeah. What do you think about, um, so I love the whole sustainability movement, the whole eco-friendliness. I want to ask you, there's people who they'll be like, yeah, I rock with that. I'm all about eco-friendly, but then they go buy other stuff that's not eco-friendly. You know, it just seems like very contradictory with some people. And I'm a, I can also say, you know, like that's me. I can say I rock with everything you're doing, but I think in terms of access, I just, it's not a life I live, but I respect what you're doing. So how do you convert people who are not eco-friendly buyers and everything, and then you make them into conscious-minded consumers? Yeah, that's tough because you're almost like creating demand. You're pulling an apple where you're like, okay, I'm only going to give you this one charger that you can only use on this device. And you're you're fabricating demand for your product in that case where someone like isn't a buyer, doesn't really align, or maybe they do, but they don't want to buy. I think like to answer your question, the best thing that, that I can do or that my brand can do and other brands can do is just like educate as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Like you might have to pay $10 for a t-shirt that is, you know, sustainable, sustainably sourced cotton made in Canada that is really good quality that you can keep for a hundred years instead of $3.50 for a cotton t-shirt that- Like a gilded. Know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was made in- those Nowhere. gilded t-shirts are so rough, <laughs> especially in the summer you're sweating. You get so itchy. It's so heavy. But like the sustainable ones, I actually love those the most. There's one shirt I have from uh, my friend Oliver. He had a brand called uh, Socon. 
So he was building the entire, he, I can say he was like one of the pioneers for the athleisure movement for men. He was creating like yoga wear for men. Like, so, you know, like Nike tech fleece and everything yeah. like that. He <laughs> kind of had the vision of this in 2013. Then Lululemon just went with it. And this one t-shirt I've had for now seven years that it's still intact. It's like bamboo fabric. It's all these different materials in it and it wicks away sweat. So you know, but those t-shirts, like for me to go find a place to buy them, it's just not top of mind. I'll just go, okay, I'm going to go to Zara. I'm going to go to H&M. I'm going to go to these big box stores. So, but I can say H&M is very conscious minded now, you know, like they have like a green branding and theme. Like, so even the tote bags and everything. They're getting there. They're, they're getting there. They're slowly getting there. They're not, they're not collective yet. You know what I mean? But, you know, they're trying to catch up to you. Yeah. I think like accessibility and like getting access to good quality, sustainable clothing isn't quite there yet. Like, not you know, we can't really compete with Amazon. We can't really compete with the fact that you can order a t-shirt, a white t-shirt that you need for an event in two days and it'll yeah. arrive at your door the very next day. Exactly. Right. So yeah. that's a really, that's a really big challenge in like sustainable fashion. Mm-hmm generally. And so we brought up something that you didn't even mean to, but you brought something that I find very interesting. Bamboo fabric. Yeah. What do you think about that? Because uh, it's a, some people love it, some people absolutely hate it because it's kind of a finesse a little bit. What are your thoughts on bamboo fabric? Have you ever like, like felt bamboo fabric? Like on a yes, shirt or something? I have bamboo, specifically bamboo tees. I, have bamboo know, and I know exactly what it is, but also I'm curious to get your take on it because I'm like, I've become passionate about it now. You know, I feel like <laughs> feeling more, more, oh, this is bamboo. Oh, this is great. Then we said, so what's bamboo fabric? And I'm like, Wow. This Sorry. ain't no damn bad <laughs> <laughs> It's chemicals? Yeah, it's like rayon. <laughs> and like, That's what it is? Bamboo yeah. is a rayon, bro. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they finessed the, yo, they rebranded rayon so crazy. Damn. Yeah. yeah. That's why you need to read your clothing labels because sometimes like there's bamboo t-shirts that aren't treated the same way as like rayon bamboo t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a manufacturer in Canada, actually, that focuses on the production of their bamboo T-shirts and they make a conscious effort not to add harsh chemicals. So that's 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 one thing. And that's a. I love that you brought that up because it's like, what is sustainable? Like someone can tell you that something is sustainable and you're like, oh, this is bamboo. Yeah, I'll wear it. It's good. It's good for the planet. Sometimes it just feels units. And it feels so good. Like the, the yo, bamboo ray. Oh, <laughs> yo, we put that on. Yo. Feel light. It feels, it feels, it feels so heavy. Light. Softy. Yo, it's like a little uh, casually. Like, what's that thing? That toilet paper brand. Oh, cashmere? Is it cashmere? Is, it, is that is cashmere the toilet paper brand? Yeah, it's it. Cotton, cotton. There's, there's cashmere and then there's the one with the bear. The bear. Cashmere is the bear. Cashmere is the bear. Yeah, okay. the bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So soft. Look at my brand awareness there. Cashmere. You're going to do better. Yeah. You're going to do better. But yeah, I was just saying because uh, it, it's definitely a finesse. You mm. know, I think Royal Blend might be the one you might be thinking. Royal Blend? That's the kitty cast. Royal Blend. Kitty say it. Uh, okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. They, they only need like one strip or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And it just does everything. Like, how do you use one strip? Like, seriously. Yeah, honestly. But... Toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Char- Charming. There it is. Yeah, that's the one. I was like, yo, not cashmere. Char- bro. Char- it can't be just Charmin. Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the jingle. The jingle definitely came back right there. Yeah, they got some earned media. Of course. You know, of course. So let's let's talk about some side hustles. Oh yeah, let's get it. So, um, we, what we did is we did a little uh, research on some of the things we found interesting, and it's already one that I have cocked and ready to roll that we've already talked about. But um, when it comes to side hustles, what are some interesting side hustles that you have seen, witnessed that you know piqued your interest? Yeah, I've seen. There's a couple, and working at owner, like I get to see side hustles every day. You know, we work with these entrepreneurs who come to us and they're like, I have this idea and it's that I want to put candy in a chip machine and make candy into chips and sell it on the internet. And you're like, okay, let's do this. Like what then they're like, what's next? But anyway, that wasn't my idea. But I I did want to say that I was, I went on ChatGPT earlier and I asked ChatGPT what like the wackiest side hustle is. (laughs) Of course. And it said professional cuddling yo smart yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of like in a like, platonic way like you you offer cuddling services for emotional support yeah mm. mm-hmm. there, there's hosts have you, have you heard of the japanese hosts no oh no the japanese hosts listen alex 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 man alex knows you know so alex do you want to so, sit here 
<laughs> <laughs> so in Japan, there's this huge industry of this thing called hosts. Men who will take you out on dates, right? Take a girl out on date, not kiss her, but like this show her a great time and and just talk to her, you know, good date, that's it. And then she goes goes home. And that's the host. It's companionship. Host the Disney companionship for a night. Exactly. Hey, man, you know, I was thinking about that for one of my ideas too. I was thinking like, lying. yo, sometimes I just want to go out and like, I, I like, for example, I was walking down on um, Front Street and it was sunny out on a Sunday and I went to have a beer. But I didn't want to sit alone. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I was like, man, I just want to have someone there just to like bounce off ideas with, you know? So having like a Uber for people to have a drink with. Oh, shit. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So call a call a call a friend. Yeah. Right? They come through, they sit with you, they keep you company. Chop like and you can also like do some interest with it. You can say, Okay, chop basketball on a talk, maple leaves on a talk, business and someone's in the area comes through, we talk about it and essentially you read their profile, what they're knowledge about, and you just use that as like a way just to have drinks with someone. So it's like a dating app, but for someone that's like Compatible is, is that Bumble with BFF? You. Yeah, I like, think that's Bumble BFF, right? It's better. it's better. Well, it is one up because there's like you have you exactly I think, Nikki, exactly like it's like here's what stimulates me. Who is out there right now that wants to have a drink? Boom, that's your person. Then exactly. you just like call it a night. Do you know? I'm... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's not up for a debate. <laughs> you like a debate, eh? You're gonna me like that. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking, I, I was just thinking of one. I don't know why that made me think of like Toronto summer. Uh, Toronto summer, especially at Trinity Bell. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, people, was, like people need to show up. They don't have it. People are playing hacky sack. Like, how do you get in there? You know, yeah. how do you say, like, do you just kind of toss it up, you know, and then you just come through and you start playing through. And that's how do you make it friends as adults? Yeah. You know okay. I was thinking. So we had at owner one customer that merged spike ball and volleyball. Okay. I think it was called spike board or something like that. The, the name escapes me right now, but oh, yeah, remember when spike ball was a thing. Yeah, I guess it's still a thing. That was like, popping during, during COVID, though. Mm. That, that little thing that you put on it's the It's like ground. a board, but it's a mix between spike ball and volleyball. Hold on. Oh, so it's not spike ball. It's not spike ball. It's spike ball and volleyball. And volleyball. So it's a it's a board board. instead of a net. Mm -hmm. And you basically the rules are similar to spike ball, but you use like a volleyball. So you're like smashing off the board. Mm -hmm. And this was started during COVID. Like imagine just being like, Yeah, I I invented a sport during COVID. Listen, I have so much ideas for sports. The only weekend I started. You said in the in the trip when we're going to Philly. Oh man, we're in the car. <laughs> it's a long road trip. Oh my day. You heard this, Isaac? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, that one. All right. So the one that was about um skipping rocks. Like yes. when when guys are at, are at lakes, they love to like skip rocks. At pardon me, you're lying. That's a real sport. This guy does skip rocks like. To see Sikara. And just compete. No, it just know, means bro. your idea is valid. Does it, it, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It is valid. It just it means you're doing this, bro. It's okay it that this competition. You already know. <laughs> All right, boom. All right. So, so I actually have a new one, fam. So let's just incorporate it now. Right? So, so, so this one, fam. Incorporate that at owner. <laughs> hey, corporate that at owner. That's not fair. <laughs> They're on ESPN? Skipping rocks. Skipping rocks. I don't know what kind of stats they have for like, like, See, he has bro, I didn't know so he taken, bro. He, my man was arguing me down to the T, like, yo, this can never work. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, this could work. This could be a real sport. <laughs> you know, the whole ride. Like, how do you choose the rocks? Imagine you buy, like, rocks, like, and then they just go in the water. How do you retrieve your best rock? You don't. If the rock got you, like, with... Magnet. <laughs> no, no. Put a magnet on it so that you can, like... Imagine you have a rock that gets you, like, 50 yards, like, solid yardage. And then it goes in the water, and then you can't find another rock that accomplishes that. You, you know, you know, it's another thing. They're gonna have that objection. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the sport because because they're thinking about it like golf. It's not golf. It's skipping rocks. Let's skip. They actually do it. They know. They don't need a rock, eh? It's all in the twisty of the arm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flicking the wrist. Yeah, Flicking yeah. the wrist. It's, it's, it's the flat the, the flat joints. The flat joint overly joints. Yeah. Oh, man. Those are the words. Those do damage. Word, word, word. But but nah, so the actual sport that, that I have that real ideal for though. All right. So basically I have all right. 
you have a football in your hand and you have a circular net on the ground and there's it's a one-on-one game and what you have to do is juke the person mm. so the so the, the name of the game is juke we have to hold on to somebody for like 10 seconds so you have to get from one place to the to the net without getting held down for 10 seconds and if you can juke them you, and to the net, you're, 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 you're let. So so just to summarize, there's a net on the ground. Net on the ground. It's between the two people? No, I, no, behind the person. Behind the person with the ball. Exactly. So one person's offense, one person's defense. Ah. Okay. And all you have to do is is just juke them to the net. That's it. That's the game. How do you stop them? Do you lay, are they like, do they have like a flag on them? Like where to, that counts as a stop. You just hold you them. You just hold them. Just hold them. 10 seconds. So you have 10 seconds and then there's like a, then around the net, there's like a, a zone where it's like, you can't hold them anymore once they reach that circle point. Mm. point. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so what's the point of the ball? But you see the vision though. <laughs> you see the vision though. You like, see what I'm saying? So, so, basically, so basically it's gonna, it's gonna happen like this. So I'm offense, you're defense. Okay. So I'm about 10 yards in front of you and I have to like basically walk up to you and juke you to get to the goal. And then drop the ball in the goal. Uh, and see me. Uh-huh. So, so. <laughs> it's not a basketball play with the. With exactly. So it's like walking football. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, so you have to walk in, you're like, oh, do do. And then, you know, but you have to be. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> let, 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 <laughs> listen, <laughs> Jew, you know, you, you know what I'm talking Jewing about. Sound. This podcast is brought to you by Nyorai Sellers. If you didn't know, Nyorai Sellers is the only Black-owned wine company in Canada. Right now, I'm holding the Rosé, the 2021 Rosé bottle. This drink is amazing. I mean, it's perfect for those dishes such as seafood where you're cooking shrimp, you're having some pasta, whatever it is you're having. Grab a bottle of Nyorai Sellers, the Rosé. If you're having a date night with your significant other, you know what to grab. Grab the Nyorai. Whatever it is, grab the Nyorai. I mean, you will not go wrong with this wine. It's perfect for everybody. If you've never drank wine, this is a great bottle for you. Or even if you're a wine expert, you're an aficionado and you drink everything. I mean, you cannot go in your eye. I'm telling you, this wine is really, really good. And even though I'm boosting it this hard, it's because I really love drinking it. And I'm someone who loves to drink wine. So whatever it is, whatever the special occasion, check on your eye. They have... Sauvignon Blancs, they have Rieslings, I'm holding the Rosé right now. They have a wide variety of different collections of different wines you can choose from. Make sure to check them out. The link is going to be in the description. Check them out, order a crate for yourself, or you can uh, send a gift to someone that you want to gift um, some wine to. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. So in your rye sellers, check them out. Link will be in the description. And I'm back to the show. So, I, you know the thing is, bro, I'm just trying to like stopping someone. Like what's the, per- what's the parameter that we have to work with? Like what's the so so imagine like a good for like a backyard okay you know what I'm saying like so it's about like like you know I'm, I'm saying like ten to the maybe thirty meters type of thing like where you have like it's like a how do I say it kind of like this room you know so you can't like run around the block so it's not running around it's more of like a you know so so it's, it's meant to be paid in two ways okay what the the big way is where it's like imagine. You know, in hockey, when they have like a, a penalty mm-hmm. and like the the uh, guy is like rushing in, mm-hmm. and then he has to like make a quick juke and then shoot it, right? Mm-hmm. That's how the juke would be like. Where it's like, all right, you have to grab him quick, and he's gonna try to juke around me and get around. That's okay. what would be like the intense. So you get what I'm have, saying? We have one juke move available exactly. in our Exactly. And if you know, if you know, use it right. It's, you know, it's a stop. It's, it's, it's just done. It's done. You know, I can see this good for family barbecues. Yeah, family, all, the, all the uncles, you, me, you know. <laughs> so, I still got this. I still got. <laughs> yo, so so juke. I feel like that would be a killer sport. No, no, I, I, I you invest in that? I you got some that. investors. You got some investors? No, she says no. I would add horses to the game. You add horses. <laughs> Juke horses out. No, but the horses will be easy to juke though. Like imagine a- I, I pull it slowly pulling out my investment after hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thanks, but maybe yeah, next maybe expensive. next team. You know. So I think Alex just invented a sport. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Juke. That's the that's the game, you know. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. So that's your that's your that's your side hustle or what? No, your... that was that was my game. That's that, inspiration. That, was the, sport that, 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 that. Okay. the what the side hustle that I have that was um hilarious was um 
business cards. Okay. So I found, I found this guy on, on TikTok, and um, yeah, I actually think he's from Toronto too, or from Canada at least. And what he has is a business cards, basically business cards, but business cards, right? And what he does is he created on Etsy cards with a fake name and fake number on it. And girls buy it to give to guys that are annoying them. Mm, oh, yes. Remember it now. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> basically, that girl will buy it and keep it with her. So, if a guy's approaching her and she don't want to give him nothing, she gives him a reason this card. Mm. He calls it and, he, and the guy gets the contact information and he just starts messing with them. This I was messing with them. Hey, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just petting my pet goat. Oh, so the number on the card is actually some other dude's number. Some other dude's number. <laughs> exactly. And it has sold out. And then he posted on TikTok and it goes viral. And that pre- produces more sales. Mm-hmm. So honestly, I think it's absolutely genius. I want to find out what his name is so I can shout him out. Maybe I'll just, we'll put it in the description down below. So uh, he can uh, have his just desserts and, uh, you know. Credit where credit is due. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? There's that, there's that one guy on TikTok too. Um, he approaches couples and he gives, um, he asks like, the chick, hey, like, do you have a male friend? And then uh, he's like, yeah. Do you think like if your uh, friend had an opportunity to take you out, would he take it? It's like, no, he's like really nice and he's like whatever. And uh, they pull out a card and you have to say the names like, hey, Johnny, so Alex is away on vacation. I was thinking you can take me like bra shopping and you can hear the guy friend on the phone saying, oh, like, aren't you guys together? Like, yeah, but he wouldn't know. Like, do you still want to come with me? And the boyfriend is standing there hearing the whole conversation. So you can imagine, like, for example, like if, if this is Alex and me and his girl's calling me and then mm-hmm. I go bra shopping with his girl while Alex is still standing there. It's the way it's the way for the guy to prove that I know you got male homies, but if you give those guys a chance to make a move, they're gonna take it. So this guy goes around the mall proving that like all male friends are not like who you think <laughs> they are. Think they are. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity to get it, they're gonna like hop on it like white on rice. I'm telling you. That's horrible. That's funny. I'm just thinking of like business cards and like being in a situation like that. But imagine being at a conference and someone is like so I was trying, you're, you're only good for a conference oh. and, and you like, want to give your card to somebody at a conference yeah like, like i actually like, don't want to work with you but here's my, <laughs> here's my like card. here's my here's business nice. card genius genius yeah. genius all right so there are five dollars on etsy but guess how much he sold take a take a wild guess how many units or how many yeah, how many units how many units i'd say maybe eight thousand eight thousand thousand decks all right fifty thousand i hear if i heard five thousand in the back all right hundred k is that RR? So that's the nil number of, of, of revenue or sales? Like, are you asking how many units of cards he's... How many units of cards, yeah. And are, do they come in decks? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pack of five or pack of, yeah. It's a number of cards. It, come, it comes in, he has different options. This guy's a, you know, he has, he knows what he's doing. He has a, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's definitely risen. Def, definitely risen. He, all right, so he has some for three, three for five. 10 for 15, 20 for 25. But uh, answer the question. He has 5,451 sales. Wow, half a million. So, yeah, he's making... Wow. He's making bread. Bread so off of this. He just do the math on the unit price of one deck. Yeah. Pretty substantial. This is actually money. like a... So he's making money off of this. Off of this. He's off actually for eating, sure. eating, bro. Most definitely. Yeah, so, oh, what's a unique style also that you found, bro? Oh, for me, man, one of the key issues is like, you know, there's an art to sliding in the DMs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's an art to hitting someone up on like having like a funny one-liner on Tinder or Hinge. You need someone to help you out in like moments where you need someone to actually like come up with a funny or witty response back. So my side hustle idea is that if you're stuck on sending like a funny text to someone or like a one-liner or you're like, how do I slide into this chick's DMs like with a funny catchy phrase that's going to get her attention, they can just like easily send you something and say, okay, here's a screenshot. If the response doesn't get you what you want, like money back guaranteed. So essentially the side hustle is a professional DM slider who gives you tips and tricks and what to say in a DM so you can actually get that response back. Or if you're stuck on like a hinge opener or you don't know what to say, you can just ask someone like, what's a funny opener I can send to this chick? 
that's genuine. It's not like you can search it up in the internet. It, it exists. So is this like an AI model that like tells you what to say, or are you asking other people? You're like calling a friend. This is this is this is like you get clients to. Well, it's like a DM consultant. It's a DM consultant. <laughs> Slide in the DM, consult with me. So like, yo, bro, I'm talking to these girls. Like, are you available this week to go through some consultation calls with me? And I can give you all the different openers you can use. And if they don't work, if they don't land you a date, then you get your money back. I mean, that's a really great way to like say that you're like the managing consultant of a company on LinkedIn. You like, <laughs> I actually consult on I'm a, I'm a solo consultant. <laughs> Yo, I'd, I'd actually be like, I'd be like, man, like sliding in DMs is an art. It, there's an art to sliding in the DM because if you follow someone and you want to know who they are and like how to like get their attention, because think about it, a girl gets hundreds of DMs a day. You know what I'm saying? So there's there's one, there's like one DM idea, this one um, chick was on TikTok. She's talking about it, right? And she's like, oh, what's the funniest DM you've ever had? So this guy sent her a photos of furniture, right? And she's kind of like, raw. Like, I know where this is going. Like, what are you, what are you, why are you sending me photos of furniture? So she responds like, All right, what is this? He's just like, yo, don't mind me. I'm just moving in your DMs, you know? And... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, some guys send like a DM of a picture of a dog and there's like, oh, yo, don't worry. He just tends to run away to, to people's spaces. Like, but here I am, I'm catching him back. How are you doing? So, and chicks love these kind of messages because it's unique. It's different. It's, it's just different from what other guys do. Like some guys be like, yo, you look sexy or whatever, but they get that all the time. So you got to be different. But then how do you make sure it stays unique? Like, so, so this do is. Do you what, tell everyone to send furniture? No, this is why, as a DM consultant, you got to do your groundwork. You got to make sure you have a collection of fresh new material ready for your clients. And you can't use the same material that you use for one client on, the, on another client. I mean, ugh, I don't think, nah. If I'm a DM consultant, I'm going to have a repertoire that I know for sure works that I can say, hey, this is a framework that, I, that you can use and then give them the framework. That they could consistently use and repeat. Because, yo, like the, the, the frameworks that exist right now, it's like this. It's like follow, like three picks, right? Wait. No, I'm just saying like it's a general consensus. All, all men know this. It's like wait and then you wait till a story is posted. Then you slide in the story, you know, with something unique. Everyone knows now that like if Owen likes three of your picks, <laughs> it, like, you're going to get a response. <laughs> just wait on it. Listen, you know, that's my strategy. But you A, B, test different strategies <laughs> and see what works. But that's a tried and true method. But there's other ways like that we need to innovate the slide now. But like, can you do that with business prospects? Like, can I send a pillow <laughs> and a couch to someone on LinkedIn and be like, hey, I'm sliding into your DMs. Let's do business. <laughs> like, that would be honestly very creative. That would actually catch some executives' attention. Yeah, it's like I, I know um, Patrick by David had this story, which I don't know if it's true or not, but he said that he sent an executive a shoe and I uh, said, hey, I, heard, I have one foot in the door. Now I would love to meet you and get another foot in the door and meet you, you know? Okay. As as a way to get people, you know, to get into that meeting. So, hey, listen, if it works, it works. Like, and honestly, I would say, why do we do that on LinkedIn? Maybe just do the on DM on Instagram, yeah. and then just say, but it's only for business though. And then just so the DM on LinkedIn is like Starbucks gift cards, and like I think all oh, those sales people do like, hey, here's a five dollar gift card. Imagine like how many gift cards those execs get every yeah. single just to take a meeting. Someone actually said like let's grab dinner and offered i think this was for like um like a booking tool mm -hmm. an automated booking tool for sales mm. i'm in rev ops so i get a lot of these so people prospect you yeah a lot so like and someone was like let's get dinner and was like here's a free burger on me and i'm like that's different so it's not starbucks it? yeah of course so you, you did you take the meeting though no i didn't take the meeting I, I saw it in my inbox this morning, so I might take the meeting. But I think that's really unique. I think that's like really different. It's different. Yeah, it's but different. but there's probably like twenty thousand RevOps managers getting that same email. It's not like They're all those sequels. I'm giving you this burger with no ketchup because I know you don't like ketchup uh, on the burger. Like that's where that's that's, that's where you could close yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, sequencing sometimes it's like um very tedious. But if you do it right, you get some opens, get yeah. some meetings, you're making money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're a pro at that. Of course. Of course. I'm closest deals. Yeah. What's the worst email you've ever gotten? The worst email I've ever gotten. 
Oh, somebody just called me Michael. Michael. My name's Alina. Alina. Alina from Michael. That's when you know either someone copy pasted from another prospect. I can't remember the company and, and I wouldn't want to call them out anyways. Mm. But they clearly just like copy pasted something they wrote to someone else and just forgot to change the name. Change the name. Or, you know, sometimes I forget to change the sequence brackets. So it's like hashtag... First name, name, first name, first name, name whatever. Yeah, yeah. Hey, notice that you're a head of marketing at blank, like a uh, bracket company. Yeah. Bracket. That's tough. You know, that's tough. But you know, like someone's just doing their job, someone's you know, like they're, they're a prospect and they're hustling, they're getting out there. Like, to get up there. I, I did that mistake one time. Like I sent a mass sequence to like, uh, to get people to come to this insights event and I forgot to change the bracketing. I think there was a spacing issue. So I got responses and I'm like, yo, like, why am I getting so many responses? Like, what is this about this message? I go check the message and they're clowning me for like, hi, bracket, whatever. They were just making fun of me for messing up like the whole email. Just reply, so meeting? Okay, so meeting, you know? <laughs> Yeah. But, What's the worst email you guys have ever gotten? I mean, I don't, we get prospected for people to come on the podcast. So they're very generic. But um, one guy, and this is like a crazy email. Like he took some of my Instagram photos. He put them together in a video. He's like, hey, I see you like podcasting. I see you like doing this. I was like, man, I had to respond. Like as soon as I got that, I was like, listen, I'm not going to buy anything. I don't use this product, but I just got to give a shout out to you for this email. This is amazing prospecting. And uh, he said, thank you. Appreciate it. Like put a lot of effort into it. So I'm like, if he does this with execs and takes time, like let's say you send 10 emails with this level of personalization, I just don't see how you're not getting through the door. I don't have a bad email, but I have a bad cold intro that I tried. Like uh, when I tried uh, approaching the store one time, y'all in here, Dastalin? So... It's a hustle over everything, man. You're trying to hustle above all else. I was trying to some s- things fail. Uh, yeah, exactly. So um, I was trying to sell social media marketing. You know, back when I was doing organic marketing, and uh, I had we started working with a boutique in New Yorkville. So I'm like, bet I got one new boutique in New Yorkville. We'll get some more. So uh, across the street is a vintage boutique. They sell like you know women's vintage um, fashion. And I look at the Instagram. The Instagram is ass. I'm talking OD. Like no profile pic, no nothing. Them. But like a cell phone, like flip phone, cell phone pictures. Uh, like grainy. Grainy. And I'm like, Oof, what the hell is this? All right. I can go crazy on you this. Can destroy this. I can get, how can I have women all up in here? What? Yes. Uh, you know, over, bro. So, so I'm ready to like go and sell and I'm walking in. I see the woman at the cashier. All right, cool. Let me go talk to her. And she starts talking to somebody that's like at the racks and she's like, I, what it looks like, she sees me come in and immediately calls her to come to the cash to just have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And they start just continuously talking and I'm like, this is weird. And they just don't stop talking. <laughs> and they don't acknowledge you. And they don't acknowledge me at all. So you're just standing there. So I'm just standing there. I'm like, <laughs> um, hi, hey, okay. I'm a patron in your store. Mm-hmm. Can you give me attention? And they don't. And then they're sort of strategically ignoring me. And I'm just patient because I'm like, I don't want to interrupt them. Yeah. So, so being patient, being patient. And eventually they just, all right, stop. And, and, it, and she turns to me. And she's like, Bell Rogers? No. No Bell Rogers. No Bell Rogers. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 I don't want no Bell Rogers. I'm not Bell Rogers. It's like, no, 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 no. Whatever you're selling, no. Whatever. And I'm like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> and the, no matter what I had, she just looked at me. And from that point, she was like, all right, I don't know what this man is selling, but I don't want nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. So I took out my phone and showed her Instagram. And she's like, oh, Instagram? No, 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 we could, we could, we could. She knows she was from overseas and she was just operating her own boutique. In of course. Thing. Yeah. And she was like an older woman. So she had no idea. She's probably jaded, bro. You know? She or probably had. It too. So I'm like, all right, listen, <laughs> I don't even want to work with a person like this. Yeah. What's the point? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Well, like for like 30 minutes, I was not 30 minutes. Maybe I'm boosting, but like a good 10 minutes, I'm there like waiting. And she's strategically like (laughs) trying to avoid me, you know? Oh, that. It was, it was, it was, it was bad. That was. If you're a rookie, bro, like in like this game, bro, like that could have shattered your whole confidence. That could have. Oh yeah, Imagine, done. Like, career over. Like, career over. Like, like there's a- something about physical, like face to face sales rejection, yeah. where it's like shut the door in your face. Yeah. Like on the phone, you kind of just like pick it up again and call the next call. person, yeah. and like you know you smile and dial or like smile and dial, whatever. Yeah. But you know, you that's tough. Away. Like that's that like a was, whole other level of rejection. That one was tough. I won't even lie. I, I, I it was like she gave you a business card. 
<laughs> basically <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the reason this guy that was like a whole this like you know actual curve like mm. you know yeah, yeah that was that one was tough that one was tough but where do you see the brand going you know let's, let's circle back to you to you for let's go back to uh, collective yeah. and work towards Maybe. wrapping up I think Working at owner full time is really great because I get to learn a lot of things about entrepreneurship. And um, one of the most important things for me is it's a side hustle. Collective is a side hustle for me. And I think it's also important to talk about that it's okay that your side hustle remains a side hustle and like yeah, this that's a secondary source of income. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of you know, pressure on, on side hustlers that like you need to make it successful enough to become your full time hustle. Mm-hmm. And for me right now, it's the priority is to maintain it as a side hustle because mm-hmm. it's a creative outlet for me. Yeah. I still think that there's room for growth, whether that be launching more merch, collaborating with other brands, or turning it into something bigger than that. I don't know. I'm launching um, a new line, which is shirts, and it was a, it's a collaboration with a local Toronto artist called Chris Jordan. And we're named Chris Jordan. Great guy. He did a really, really good job. I'm really excited to launch them. And they're really unique and different. So that's coming out soon. I'm excited for everyone to see that. And then I think like there's a lot, there's a lot to come that I, I don't really you know, want to talk about it just yet. But I think the next step for me is the balance between maintaining it as a side hustle and growing it and more collaborative design partnerships, you know, more cool merch. But I think where I want to take it next is focusing more on the design and being able to outsource the designs and working with, you know, bigger companies, whether it be for merch or companies that are trying to get into merch or create, you know, create a line or or whatever it may be. I'm curious, you know, for the people who are looking to start a side hustle, how would you advise them to best structure their evenings yeah. to really maximize those six hours they have after work to really crush it and uh, get the most out of like their side hustle hours to really see prosper? Yeah, that's a really good question. I work from home. So the struggle for me is like sometimes there's no fine line between the two. Mm-hmm. And when you end your work day, it's hard to pivot when you're in the same space. So what helps me is I like leave the house. To go work So out. I'll like go to a cafe or I'll just go to someone else's house or I'll go somewhere else or I'll just go for a walk and like exit work mode so that I can come back to a space where I'm in the collective mindset. I'm going to design something. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, have a call with a supplier or whatever that may be. I think exiting your full-time job helps and not intertwining your days. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you guys do it, but I try not to have collective related meetings during my work day. Like I'll I'll purposely have them before 9 a.m. or after 5 p.m. or on the weekend. And I know that's not the best way to do it, but that separation. Yeah. You know, that's another another challenge too, is trying to put a lot of tasks within those hours. So you can say, okay, I need to do some marketing and you should create some social media. I need to build this email list. You have this pressure to really build and put a lot on your plate within these hours to really get a lot done. What's your approach to it? Do you just focus on one task for the entire evening and do your best? Or do you try and uh, juggle with a couple to get the most out of like every division of like your side hustle business? Yeah, I used to do it where I would just try and do everything at once and that didn't work. And then I did it where I would try and just focus on finance one night, like banking, cash flow, make sure that like there's money in the bank and all bills have been paid one night. And then the next night or the next morning, maybe plan blog content or plan Instagram or mood board or plan when my next shoot is going to be or talk to the supplier or whatever on different days. And that didn't work either because, you know, if you have funds coming out on Monday, you can't have Friday be your finance day or, or whatever. So I just try to do it in line of priority. Like earlier this morning, I had to do design work because I needed to print out cards for this new line. These are little like cards that talk about the artists and the uh, the design on the shirt that we're selling and that's launching next week so i knew that i had to get that done this morning so i mean like there's no real right answer to it like there's no art or methodology it's kind of just what works for you and how i like project manage in my brain is just like do the thing that needs to get done first right there's one uh, article i read on forbes years ago so when this is when jack dorsey was running twitter each day he had a single specific mission today's finance day today is team leadership meetings day so each day is blocked for a certain thing and what that helped them do is i'm waking up today because i'm meeting with alex alina isaac and we're talking about senior leadership stuff today i'm talking to head of marketing sales um social media team and doing this so his head is in tune to talk about marketing the entire day Mm -hmm. and what he found was that 
by thinking about one specific thing, subconsciously, he's going to get ideas about that topic when he's talking about that topic. Like if I spoke with Alex this morning and I'm talking with you and he gave me a problem, when I'm talking to you, I can get some inspiration regarding our leadership team that I could not have thought about without being inspired by a conversation with you regarding the same topic. So when you bring certain energies all together and it's around one single idea and you stop thinking about that idea regarding that topic and you're talking about something else still regarding that thing, ideas start flowing easier and that's how you're able to run Twitter efficiently wow. while also running Square at the same time. So you'll be with Square team and he's also doing Twitter and he'll kind of keep everything within the same flow. That's a really good perspective. Yeah. And like a good way to set your intentions for the day. Exactly. In a very effective way. Yeah. I'm going to start using that. Yeah. Also just set routines too. Like when you set a routine and committing to that routine, for example, we're talking about prospecting. Even if I don't feel like making calls, I have to make those calls, you know, because it's like about the discipline to not veer away from. Even when someone calls me, I don't even take it because I'm like, if you don't get new, fresh prospects in your cadences and your calling, then you just wasted your day. It's kind of like just honoring one specific task and just this is all we're doing today. That's it. And that's all my focus. It tends to get good results because your energy is just pointing out one thing and that yields better results than pointing out like into different parts of the circle. Yeah. Expectancy get. And it sets you up for success like, exactly. in the next day. Like if your pipeline is dry, you're not going to have anyone to call. You're going to have to dig into your time the next day. Yeah. That's a good methodology too. Yeah. It's like if, you, if I know that I have to spend my whole afternoon folding t-shirts and putting them into boxes... I'm going to make sure that I get all the design work that I need to get done the night before. Yeah. So that when I have the free time in the evening, I'm actually just dedicating it to what needs yeah. to be done. So much time goes away from doing getting ready tasks, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like getting ready to send an email, getting ready to draft certain things. Like I hate those getting ready tasks. I just want to get get the day. Boom. Let's go. Calls, emails, funnels, everything, you know, just everything is ready to go. So you feel like you go to bed, you feel like a success. And you go, you sleep out, okay, yeah, I feel successful today. Like I got my shit done. Yeah. Yeah. But not every, not every day is like that. Sometimes you're like, it's 12 o'clock or... So it's you got to slow 11. down. Yeah, I know. That's... You got to slow down. Just get into that. <laughs> <laughs> got to slow down. Now, for setting up and, and registering your side hustle, owners is one of the main platforms for that. You know, what are some of the benefits owner has over just any other platform? Yeah. So I registered Incorporated Collective on Owner before I even became an owner employee. I mean, it was super, super easy. Right now, Owner offers sole proprietorship registration. So you can actually register your business name, essentially just making it legit. Mm -hmm. And you can also incorporate your company, meaning you're incorporating a new entity that is going to be a business governed by other people, either one person or I don't know, up to 50 people. And owner just makes it easy because to actually do that in reality, it requires a lawyer, it requires a lot of money, and it requires a lot of paperwork, which when you're an entrepreneur, a side hustler, or someone doing something full time, like you don't want to do that. You don't want to like dive into government forms and legal resolutions and all that stuff. Like it's not what your focus is. You want to do the thing. Mm -hmm. You want to do the idea, not the paperwork. But sometimes, you you know, you wear a lot of hats and you have to do that. But owner helps eliminate all that. So it's a legal platform. We make the incorporation process in Canada a lot easy. We It's fully automated. You go in, you answer questions um, in our application, um, and we help you incorporate in different jurisdictions in Canada. And so after you incorporate, there's a lot like the, the, the tagline we, need, we use is like, it doesn't stop there. There's so much responsibility that comes with owning a business. Whether you're a sole proprietor or a corporation, you you now have to wear the hat of like managing finances, managing the marketing, your chief of operating, your chief everything officer. Exactly. So beyond like the actual setting up and launching the business or so registering and incorporating, owner helps with things like creating legal documents or filing your annual return, which I didn't know you had to do until I learned about owner. I didn't know every company needed to file a tax return and an annual return. Those two are separate. So there's a lot of like there's there's the technology, but there's a lot of education that comes with owner too. Like we notice that there's a big education gap in the market where there's a lot of things that you need to do f to keep a company compliant that not everyone's aware of. But on a more fun note, you know, we help different kinds of entrepreneurs. So people that are side hustlers who want to, you know, freelance, be a photographer, 
create business cards or whatever it may be. They're registered professional business. DM sliders. There you go. Professional DM sliders incorporated. You know, <laughs> we help them with that, but then <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine should, a business card should we just trademark that? that? Professional DM sliders. <laughs> uh, what do you do for a living? Well, you know. Professional DM Pro slider. DM slider. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. Do you want to bring on co-founders to your professional DM sliding business? <laughs> Do you know what? That's a fun different thing languages. If you're like traveling internationally, you need like a DM slider. Like if you go to like Tulum, you know you need so, you need. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? How are you gonna chop up Mexican gown if you don't have a Pro DM <laughs> slider on deck? You just bring your like. You you just walk around everywhere with your like DM consultant and your translator, <laughs> you know. and you just stand there. You don't do any of the work. It's just like life on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, Nikki, that's a great question. PDMS, PDMS, PDMS. That's how, that sounds like professional uh... DM skis. No, nah, when I said it sounds like PMS, but <laughs> <I'm fine. laughs> no. <Yeah>. but different. <laughs> You should put that in the owner PDS name it. tool and see if it exists. Yo, you know what? This, this can catch on. The, nah, the DMC. DMC. DM Consultant. DM Consultant. Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, oh! Oh, co-owner right there, Nick. Let's do this. Co-founders. This is what I'm saying. She said deep and meaningful conversation. Yes. To the mic. Yep, yep, yep. Shout out to Nick in the back. <laughs> Alina's business. <laughs> We we've started a lot of business in this like our right, conversation. Right. Just gonna, like, so, this is why you don't know, order some more. You know, like, yeah, honestly, like, I thought you could, you know, that could do something. Honestly, oh, that's a fire. We are, yeah. yeah. But you know, let's crack open this on your eye sellers, man. Oh, it's yeah, true. yeah, yeah. I mean, let's have a little. I'm celebrating. All right, celebrate. Felt to about the spots from this old mold. This is a beautiful bottle, and it's made in 2020 when Collective was founded. Was that on purpose? Yes, yes, it was on purpose for sure. See, the couch is not so bad. Well, yeah. It's not so bad. It's, it's not, not so bad. You gotta tilt the glass. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like it was my first pour or something. Toasting to the new biz. Toasting to good biz. To good biz. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm the next professional DM slider, everyone. <laughs> if you need DM sliding consultancy, <laughs> you know, we're gonna holla. have a new customer on owner tomorrow morning. I'll be like, I knew that was coming. <laughs> that was coming. <laughs> so guys, um, this was. <laughs> Toast up. Cheers. Toast up to new business. Cheers. Cheers to good business, to new business, exactly. new relationships. It's to hustling, exactly. side hustling. Yes. Ladies, let's go. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's new rye. That is good. Like the new rye? Yeah, like yeah. It's like not too dry and sweet mm -hmm. at the same time. It sits well on the palate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When it hits the back of the tongue, yeah. it just flows really good. And like, you, I don't think you need it to, need you, wow, I can't speak. It's so good. Mm. You know, it's, it's you don't need to have a sophisticated palate. Like it's mm. very soft. Yeah. Well done. Yes, it's sublime, everybody. It's actually what like a friend of a friend of my girl said. Yeah. She saw it. we um we had them at we not had them but we met them at Stacked Market or somewhere. And my girl was there, and her girls was there, and Ryan was there. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I can get like a real unique, like their their real thoughts on it. And then she said something very similar to what you said. So I, that's how you know it's real. That's how you know the idea is valid. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pour some for the ladies in the back, for Nikki and Alex. We're going to serve some Uri. <laughs> Steve. But with, and with that being said, let's wrap up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The house is what you can't control. That's a wrap. So control your grind and control your life. I'm Alex. And I'm Owen Osende. I'm Alina. And that's the show, y'all. Peace. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.